Dr. Ginger Garner again. To finish out this hip series, there are several parts to it. There's abdominal diaphragmatic breathing, the belly breath video. There's the power breath or the TATD breath video. We have videos on what not to do in class when you're lying down, what to do in class when you're standing up. I give you a couple of standing postures as examples. And the final video is another classic, often miscalibrated pose. What I'm gonna do is show you what to do with this pose in class. And the pose in question is the quintessential downward facing dog. This pose is probably the most often used and misused pose in yoga. With hip pain, often comes pelvic pain and back pain and other related issues, even gastrointestinal type issues. That can be flared up if you have any abdominal scars, etc. There's a lot of things that go into treating the hip successfully and managing any pain that you may have. If you're going to go to yoga class and you have hip pain, or if you want to prevent hip injury, or if you've had surgery or a hip replacement, I need you to carefully follow the suggestions that I'm going to give to you for making downward facing dog much safer and safer and more effective. The very first thing that I'm going to have you do is to ditch downward facing dog and do this pose instead. The only thing that you need to be able to do in order to substitute this new pose is to be free. Now, I often tell my patients, my students, you don't need hands to do yoga, and that is true. You don't have to stand on your wrists. A lot of people can't tolerate that, and that's totally fine. You don't need hands to do yoga. You can use your forearms. If that's the case, and the wrists bother you, please come down to your forearm and just line your arms up shoulder width. Get your knees underneath you. Separate them about hip width apart. And this is perfectly great substitution. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to demonstrate from my hands. I want a really wide base of support with your hands, not closed, but a really open palm. Finger, your little finger, I want at the edge of your yoga mat on either side. <clears throat> we want another arm spiral, which means face of the arms, and the face of the elbow, forward, shoulders away from the ears. So we have a very long spine, one that isn't dropping or sagging, and one that isn't rounded either, but happily somewhere in between. This is roughly spinal neutral, not a detail we'll get into right now. Just find a happy place for your spine, and then if your toes will turn under, I would like for you to do that. Turn the toes under and breathe through the arches of the feet, through the Achilles tendons and up the back of the calf. Breathe so that the back of the neck finds an open airway and is very long. Shoulders away from the ears, the shoulder blades at their tips may draw in and towards the spine. The only thing that I want you to do here is lift the knees one inch. That's it. This is called downward facing dog prep, or DVP for short. Notice I'm still breathing because I'm talking. I'm using that power breath without even thinking about it. And you can also glide a little if you would like to. But the point is to be able to breathe and maintain DDP, realizing that you're going to do a whole lot of strengthening through the arms, through the shoulder complex, through the trunk, and through the hip. This is the pose I would like for you to substitute for downward facing dog. If you have hip pain or hip replacement, you should have no groin pain at all. If you do down dog prep and you have groin pain, that's a red flag. And I would like for you, I recommend, highly recommend for you to go see your physical therapist who specializes in hips and or an orthopedic surgeon. Now, a physical therapist is going to do a very detailed neuromuscular and musculoskeletal exam. Surgeons will be looking for things that are surgical in nature. So I would recommend seeing your physical therapist. Um, they're going to be most well-versed in what to do to help you. But no, groin pain is a red flag that means discontinue downward facing dog and downward facing dog prep. Look for those red flags. To progress into downward facing dog with strength, 
to prevent injury and also again, hip preservation. Arm spiral, turn the toes under, try your down dog prep, glide, glide, breathe. You're doing your power breath here, breathe. And then you're gonna move your feet back. I may have to move my hands forward just because I ran out of room. Move your feet back. You see how I'm not moving my spine as I go into downward facing dog? I'm just moving my arms and the legs. And this is my first downward facing dog of the day, so I'm not gonna cram my heels to the floor or force anything. I'm just gonna bend the knees. I'm gonna do what I call ringing the bell. Do my ears meet my arms? They should put my head in a good position. I have an unbroken wrist through the hand, um, which means I'm not like this. I'm about five or 10 degrees up. That's what I call an unbroken wrist. And I have a spinal neutral, a happy place that's not rounded or swaying. It's halfway in between. I should be able to breathe. And the last thing that you're looking for is no groin pain, no pinching, no clicking, no popping, especially as you transition that. Slide a few times. Breathe, 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 breathe. Yes, if you need to. And that is your new entry and exit, an advanced version of downward facing dog that is therapeutic. Combining the principles of physical therapy in the evidence base with yoga. This video is available in its entirety for practice at medicaltherapywithyoga.com. Free registration, free video. I'd like to thank you for joining me on Yoga Day to get this, this introduction into hip preservation. It's my hope that, that everyone would not need my services in physical therapy for hip preservation. But if you do, if you have hip pain, pelvic pain, back pain, SI joint pain, sacroiliac joint pain, then following these principles will help you to manage your pain, to improve alignment, to develop strength, endurance, um, and the equanimity that goes along with you learning yoga yet and practicing so that as you step off the mat, you can take all of these things with you through the day and be able to do the things that you want to in life. If you have any questions at all, feel free, contact me at gingergarner.com or on Facebook at Dr. Ginger Garner. Have a wonderful day.